Hi, good afternoon. Um, thank you for the introduction. My name is Yoshiharu Tsukamoto. Momoyo Kaijima. Nice to meet you. Um, okay, so, um, yeah, thank you for, yeah, uh, have you seen the exhibition? Yeah? Okay, uh, please, uh, uh, later, later, please enjoy it. And then, <coughs> what? Oh, it's very nice. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. これはもうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそう
to make better accessibility to local resources, to activate people's behavior and uh, create new type of public space. So the first one is, uh, yeah, is a uh, um, canal swimmers club. And then for this uh, type of project, um, I we use the word club. Um, rather than the facility, rather than institution. So it's a kind of de-institutionalized space based on the collection or gathering of, uh, of behaviors of the people and behavior of the nature. So the Bruges used is, uh, is a very yeah, famous uh, tourist destination, uh, World Heritage uh, Site. And um, now it's a, a, a million, uh, one million visitors a year. Uh, no, no, four million visitors a year against uh, 100,000 population of the uh, of, uh, city of Bruges. So public space is mostly occupied by tourists. And then city wants to um, find the, mm, another type of public space. And at the moment when they restart the Bruges Triennale in 2015, and then one of the challenge was to let people swim again in the canal in the city. But because until 19, after, yeah, this is a, uh, this black and white photo at the uh, bottom left is uh, the scene of canal swimming in 1976. But uh, from 1977, it was prohibited because of the pollution of the polluted water. And nowadays, it's just utilized for tourist boat. And um, so there is a barrier between people and these local, local resources, which is water, uh, produced by the pollution, contamination. And um, although people have skills of swimming, but this skills, skill set is not utilized because of this barrier. So the project is to lower the barrier. So the first uh, the operation to lower the barrier is improving the water quality, and then now it's ready. But still there is a, mind, a mental barrier among people to swim in the canal, because if you are only person who swim in the canal, people say, ah, he's crazy or she's crazy. But if 100 people swim together, and people realize, that, oh, this swimming in the canal is a kind of, kind of culture of Bruges. So the same behavior might be considered in a, in a different uh, way. So we propose uh, this uh, floating barge, floating platform, to let people jump into the water and um, with a very simple uh, uh, shading system on it, it's floating, and then it's a universal design you, you can access with a wheelchair also. And then it was very chilly when it's opened. Uh, it was, the, it opened May 1st, but the, the water temperature was 11. No one jumped into it, but the, we, we did it, but the, okay. In June, in June, it was very hot, so high school kids start jumping into the water and then became so popular. So it's uh, August 1st, so there are few citizens, few people uh, are from uh, in, the, in the city, but the, uh, uh, many tourists are also enjoying this platform. And then we encounter uh, also the um, Bruges uh, family. Uh, the grandfather uh, bring, brought uh, the uh, grandson to teach swimming. And then it's, it's true because it's, it's very interesting because uh, one, the people who swam uh, in 1976 in this canal, yeah, must be, um, yeah, uh, seven uh, teenagers. Now they are fift late 50s or 60 years old. So they can s still swim, but they also have a grandson. So they can teach to swim in the, in the canal. So the, the skill set was, was given uh, or handled 
uh, from uh, former generation to uh, next generation. I think the, this is a very important quality of public space. The skill is uh, exchanged between people. Yeah, okay. So second club is uh, Fire Foodies Club, realized in Shenzhen in 2017. Um, um, the Sh Shenzhen is a super hyper-modern city. Uh, it's a kind of um, um, the, the, the modern city apply, idea of a modern city applied in, in quasi-tropical uh, climates. So it's a totally beyond the expectation of the Corbusier, for example, about the vegetation on the ground level. So very free ground level occupied by green. They grow so fast. So they have to cut the branches every day in order to keep it uh, more uh, inhabitable conditions. And then they produce, this process produce a lot of debris, in the bio debris in the city. And then on the other hand, there is an a urban f a village, which is an old district, which is uh, surrounded by urban, uh, urban, uh, urbanization. And then the original uh, inhabitants uh, put uh, uh, rooms and uh, floors uh, little by little, and then it became a kind of very densely built, uh, packed uh, residential area. And, uh, but the ground level, you can still see the very active uh, uh, behavior of the people cooking on the street. So I think it's nice to make this uh, two different uh, um, behavior. One is a production of the bio debris from the hyper, hyper modern city, and then cooking on the street with real fire. If they meet in this urban village, it must be very nice. So we designed a huge chimney to let people burn this uh, uh, bio debris in the city to cook, and then in this, this is a uh, um, yes, this is a project for Shenzhen Biennial, uh, urban and architecture Biennial. In most of the case, this um, the, at the end of the uh, project, curator always ask us to cut the cost, and then. Oh, we don't have money. Please think about reducing the the uh, the uh, blah blah blah. So I I I think it's better to propose three of three three chimneys, and then probably we can make at least one out of three. <laughs> but actually, we could make three. <laughs> And then it's, uh, it's, uh, it's uh, really surprising that we could make three of them. But uh, one, year, uh, one month before the opening, the China uh, was uh, um, alarmed by WHO to stop, uh, uh, to to stop producing the uh, CO2 uh, or, or uh, PM2, PM2. Yeah, there's a kind of small particles in the air. So they, the, the local government uh, declared, uh, launched a new law to, to prohibit the, the burning fire outside of the house. So we couldn't make this real uh, kind of barbecue um, uh, under this huge chimney, but uh, then we, we did just a uh, um, hot pot. <laughs> Tiny little steam going up into this big <laughs> chimney. It's so, it's stupid, but uh, but it's it's anyway. It's it's okay. Yeah? Okay, yeah. It's uh, in vain, but it's a, it's a kind of a nice art piece. <laughs> so another project is Sora Cooking Club. I was invited by Matera nine, 2019 to do something uh, together uh, with their Open Design School, and then. The, I, f I surveyed the climate of Matera and then realized that they only have six millimeter uh, rainfall uh, per year. And in Japan, we have 1,500. So it's one th almost one third. And, um, and then they have uh, 330 days of, uh, of sunny days. So they have full of sun energy. So I propose to um, to cook uh, every to cook by the solar power. So the solar cooker is an open resource. 
uh, available from internet, so you can download any kind of uh, draw uh, the the the, uh, the the drawings, and then I combine this into Tolori to make Sora Cooking Club. So we go to yeah like this. It's a very simple structure. Uh, we need more in, in, in how to say improvement. So and we go. We invite the school kids to participate into this project because this open design school, uh, Matera, has a farm in their uh, property. And then also uh, we visit the school to ask them to, to join the project. And uh, there is also uh, two other projects which is called Mamma Mia, is a collection of the uh, recipe from all over the world. And then Garden Topia, transforming the empty plots or kind of leftover space into a vegetable garden in Matera. So these three projects, uh, Sora Cooking Club, Mamma Mia, and Garden Topia can work together as a kind of food-oriented uh, uh, community project. So we go to uh, markets to buy the vegetables like this, and then construct several uh, different type of Sora cookers, and then cook uh, um, uh, Aqua pazza, yeah, it's uh, it's actually takes time, one hour. So it's then then I, I I change the name of the project. We change the name of the project. Sora slow cooking club. Yes, yes. <laughs> and then slow cooking is trendy now. So yeah. <laughs> okay. So um, maybe we don't have time. Okay, just one minute. So. Um, we did the uh, uh, project, uh, um, we, we were involved in the recovery process of a, a great big uh, uh, Tohoku earthquake and then um, worked together with fishermen. And then it's a very surprising encounter for us because they are so, so skillful to transform their own environment into resources for their living. <laughs> And then we, we really want to learn a lot from them. And then we, we did the almost ethnographical uh, approach uh, for, the, for this uh, recovery project. And then we designed this core house. And uh, OK, we skip. And then, uh, yes, Momoyo is, uh, is really, um, um, wor Momoyo worked very hard uh, together with fishermen to start Oshika Fisherman School. And then it's also kind of an exchange of the skill set between people. So invite uh, young people to fishermen's village to let them know about the fishing life. And then let them uh, be part of the, the community. And uh, how many students were already involved in this uh, fisherman's school? Mm, I don't know. 80? No, 80, something like 80. Yes, yes, yes. And then how many are now working here? Working. Three. Uh, two. 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 Oh, mm. Yes. And then how many uh, inhabitants originally here in this village? Uh, originally, so um, it, uh, 113. Before earthquake. Before earthquake. And then after earthquake. 17. 17. Mm. 17. And then they already got the two new person who are working as a fisherman in this village. So it's very effective. And then, and then we, uh, they found uh, the life of a fisherman is not in the ocean, also uh, connected with the forest. And then they opened the, the, the field, the, the cedar trees, cedar forest, which is not managed well, and then transform it, it into um, the villages uh, to exchange skills to learn the skills from the fishermen. And then this is, it's, it's called summer. And then uh, we organize a summer school to build these villages together with uh, in participants. And then uh, utilizing the timber of this mountain to construct the tiny houses. And uh, yeah, we all, they always cook. And then, uh, and then uh, also build a kind of a, a central house for, what uh, do Main house, yeah. Main house and the tiny house, yeah. Like this. So this is, a s and then we do also the school of uh, making the rock wall, uh, stone walls uh, to, to keep the uh, landscape as like a terrace. And then uh, this is a school of uh, making a boat, for festival boat, 
uh, made of uh, uh, straw to celebrate the uh, ancestors' uh, arrival and then departure in the middle of August. Yes. Yes, they also teach fishing um, again. Yes. Thank you very much. When I first started to go to art school, um, you know, my father would ask me, like, oh, so what are you doing going to this college, blah, blah, blah. And I would say, well, I'm working on architecture. <clears throat> and, and, you know, <clears throat> the reason for that, of course, because I come from, I mean, come from Thailand, and uh, it's very difficult to explain what art would be, like, as a kind of idea of, like, something you would want to go and be educated and try to become an artist. So I thought it's easier to just say I'm going to be an architect um, because that's something that's, you know, at least uh, there's some kind of idea of, uh, oops, how do I, oh. So that, you know, I, I kind of made it as an excuse, but I was always uh, interested in architecture as I was also in, in a lot of different uh, fields of, you know, art and culture, so film and things like that was always very influential to me. Um, but um, then as I started to work um, in, you know, and I think a lot of people know that I have been fairly well known for cooking and making food and, and making a kind of communal space, um, the space became quite important in terms of like how one would orchestrate or how one would... Um, you know, find us a platform to like bring people together. And of course, in a way, somehow the idea of architecture helps to frame that. Um, and actually, so I'm going to start here, it's like already 1997. And um, in Germany, I was kind of, uh, I was given the first uh, residency to go to a this uh kind of like an award in, in Cologne. And when I arrived, the curator picked me up and he said, well, you're the first person who's going to this program, uh, so we, we don't have anything for you. You have to basically start everything up by yourself. So here he gave me a big envelope of money and he said, here, you know, go and buy everything you need to stay here you know, for the next six months. And um, and I said, okay. And then he dropped me off in a place which was empty. So I went to different places, Ikea. I went to, you know, secondhand stores and started to buy, you know, couches and tables and different things that I was starting to use as, you know, to be, to be in residence, to live there. And in the process of, you know, accumulating these things, I realized, well, but, um, you know, I'm going to leave and the program, you know, it's it's six months, but every other year. So they're going to have to do something with all these things that I bought, right? And I said to myself, so maybe I should try to use these things that I'm acquiring as part of the work that I'll have to do at the end of the residency. So at, at the end of the residency, I have an exhibition to make. And so I said, okay, well, I'm buying beds and chairs and tables and kitchen stuff, so I'm going to have to make a house, uh, which then all these things will then go into. And um, in that process, I asked the, the space, uh, which was the Kunstverein in, Ham in Cologne, that they would somehow like build a wall to insulate the office from the exhibition space and to keep the exhibition space open like 24 hours a day and seven days a week. And uh, in that space, I built uh, a little kind of building, as you see there. And it's actually the replica of my apartment here in New York, which is uh, on in the East Village on 7th Street. And I did that thinking, well, you know, it's a space I know. I live in it. I use it every day. So I really, I like it. It's a nice, comfortable space, has good uh, kind of feng shui. And so uh, they built it, and I asked them everything would function as a regular apartment. So there's a kitchen, there's bathroom, toilet, bathtub, exactly kind of like in New York. And then basically we open it up uh, at the end of my stay. I basically came and put everything in in the last couple of days before I left, 
and I made a big dinner for all the workers from this insurance company which was uh, sponsoring the residency. And then slowly people started to arrive and they just started to stay. Um, at that time when the exhibition opened, it was, it was coincided of course with a big art fair that happens in Cologne every year. So a lot of students were coming to Cologne to go to the art fair, to look at art and to see different art exhibitions. So then they discovered this apartment and so they decided to stay. So everyone started to move in because it was free. Uh, so you can see there, uh, and there, you know, and everyone is sharing the space. There are basically f different people, strangers, uh, and then slowly um, people would come and have birthday parties. They came and had weddings, and it was up for like three, four months. Um, which at that time, you know, literally three days after it opened, I left. I came back to New York, so I have no idea what happened to this thing. Uh, so the pictures we see here are actually from like a Instamatic camera that they left in the in the house, so that people can just take pictures themselves, and um, and that became basically the images for the catalog. Oh. Um, yeah, and then also like what was interesting, so after four months of like this uh, being up and people coming and using it, and they of course used the interior, but also because it was just like this little kind of structure in the middle of this very big space, people started to use the outside space around the, <coughs> around the apartment uh, structure itself, and people made gardens, they bought their artwork, they made sculptures, a homeless man was living there with his dog. Um, so it became like a totally, you know, in a way, when we first started to do it, the team at the museum, you know, some people were skeptical. A lot of people were saying, you know, the things are not going to last. You know, people are going to just take your TV and all the stereo, whatever is there. And uh, at the end of the uh, four months, um, you know, the apartment was still intact. It hasn't been burned down. Um, there were more things in the apartment. People, people brought things and left them there. And then uh, at the same time, we realized like people would spend time and they would like write notes to each other on the wall. So the wall, the whole wall of this apartment was covered in different drawings and texts and, and, and notes to each other. Oops, did I, yeah, I can't see it from here. Okay, so that I want to go more here. Um, okay, so more focus on the lower image. So that's, um, this is uh, the secession in Vienna, which is a kind of like probably the first white cube, uh, you know, in exhibition space. And when I went there, um, I think that was like in the late, yeah, I'm not sure anymore what year it is. Um, you know, the, so people always come and pick me up at the airport and then drive me into town. To, to, to go to the hotel or whatever. And then this like little trip drive, you know, I would start to ask them like, oh, so who comes to the, you know, to the exhibition space? You know, um, what do people do here? What did they, how, you know, how much time do they spend there? So I slowly have this kind of uh, ongoing conversation, which is a kind of like my way of trying to like research the context of where the work would be shown. Um, and, um, and at one point he said, but you promise you'll cook, right? And I said, yeah, probably, you know. And so this work is called He Promised. Um, uh, and of course I did cook uh, a barbecue outside. But anyway, so then I arrive and it's this beautiful big space and uh, it's pretty much like a open, like, and there was like four columns in the middle of the space. And the four columns were covered in a kind of... Um, mirrored stainless steel and I think it was something they had done like in the 80s a kind of like re re renovation and I think it was part of the design to make this kind of stainless steel column because of course uh, mirrored stainless steel pretty much reflects everything around it so essentially it reflected the white room which then it just disappeared into the room and I was looking at this and I said okay well I'm going to try to make a very big object that will also d 
disappear like these columns. And, um, and the idea then for myself, again, you know, looking at a lot of architecture, I was looking at, um, at uh, now I forget his name, of course. <laughs> Uh. Hmm? Schindler, exactly. Thank you, Neil. <laughs> so I was looking at Schindler and I went to visit Schindler's house uh, out in LA on King's Road and I was really kind of impressed by, of course, like the way how e simple it was made and how really light and airy and um, and it was a kind of little commune right so it was a house built for two families and they shared a space and maybe even shared a lot more than that but uh, the idea was that it was a kind of a very interesting uh, you know house that I, I really enjoyed and uh, and at the same time of course Schindler being Austrian I felt like at that moment, that uh, it would be interesting to bring Schindler back uh, to Austria. Um, so I, I, I made a plan to build basically the studio, one section of his house, which was this, the studio part of the house. And, um, and I said, well, you know, I would like to build it out of this kind of mirror stainless steel. So I went around, talked to different fabricators, and... Um, well, one, it was very expensive to uh, material-wise to make, especially in Germany. And then on the other hand, there was also like not a lot of time. There was like four months before the exhibition went up. Um, and somehow I was in Guadalajara in Mexico um, to look at a, a ceramics factory that's run by a friend. And we were drinking tequila and talking. And I was saying, yeah, you know, I'm working on this project. I'm trying to find a place to build this, uh, this structure out of stainless steel. And um, he said, well, we'll do it. We'll do it for you. <laughs> right? And I said, yeah, but, you know, there's only uh, three months and then you have to ship it. I said, don't worry, we, we're going to do it. We're going to make it. Just send us the plans and we'll make it for you. So I said, great. So I sent my, my friend who's a fabricator in Berlin with the plans. They went, they had discussions, and then we weighed it, you know. Um, and um, and uh, so at the opening, basically some crates arrived like two days before the opening, and we opened it up and there were like, you know, the pieces that you see in the, the image below. It's like just the floor and a chimney, right? And then everyone's like, but, but where is the rest of the stuff? <laughs> <laughs> so then we called Jose Noé in uh, Mexico and he said, well, you know, it's a little harder than we thought to make this thing. <laughs> uh, but... It's being made, and we'll, you know, as it as we get it done, we'll ship it to you, you know, like that. And I said, okay, great. Um, so I said to the guys at the secession, okay, so this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna open with this floor, and and then um, we're going to make it. Well, I already asked them that it, the space be open longer than normal, but and I said, and then so if you come and you buy a ticket. Uh, basically you have the ticket to come back for the rest of the show so you can always come back and then as the as the and, and within the exhibition itself there were collaborations with other artists there was films being shown there were DJs coming to play and um, and um, so yeah so that's the other images um, so literally like uh, I, I love this image anyway but um so literally, like the the boxes would arrive every week or every few days, and then they would take it out, and the installers would come in, and then they would get a new piece and they would put it up, and um, and the show was up for like, you know, two months, and literally on the last day of the show, the last box arrived. <laughs> they put one last piece, a few pieces up on the roof. They took the photo which you see there, um, and then they took it apart. So, so basically, you know, the, the exhibition was this kind of like slow process of house building. And, um, but, but what was good was that then at the same time, people started to come back and they spent time. 
and uh, and again like um, always when you I mean at least I notice when I kind of built this kind of time space structure people start to like write on the walls so this whole room was like had like notes and text and things written on the wall all the way around yeah so thanks uh, um, and um, I also was looking at Puve because of course he was like you know building things and sending them to kind of Africa and tropical places and um, so I wanted to reverse the process so I wanted to build the thing in the tropics and send it back to France and in the process of it um, I have a young artist who was helping me who was an assistant and he needed to go to France to install the show but he was having a really difficult time because he had to get a visa and I was really upset by this idea that you know he has to get a visa there was a lot of problems and so uh, in the process of, uh, of of trying to get him to go to France I decided we were just gonna make this like Pouvet toilet and um, which is like a you know little Asian style you know squat toilet and uh, and then on the uh, the paper that you would use to wipe your behind was the application for the French visa so it was this uh, kind of little tropical toilet room. Uh, unfortunately, because, you know, and this is part of, like, I, I usually don't take any pictures, but the galleries would take pictures, so, but they always take pictures without people in it. <laughs> but I, I realized that when you look at the, the, the architecture and, all, and having seen the picture of people with it, it makes much more sense that, you know, you always have people occupying his, his, and this is a kind of sister piece to the toilet, which is next to the toilet. And it's, uh, again, we kind of bastardized like the Puve idea and built this uh, little pavilion, which um, has a table uh, with, I think, like hundreds of thousands of pieces of the puzzle. And, and so, so of course, actually people would come and sit and stay around this table to try to figure out and they would build this puzzle, which then becomes, uh, uh, oh, sorry, the De La Croix, liberty leading the people, kind of. But again, I, I and I'm, you know, I always like a bit disappointed that they don't have pictures of people around it when it's that actually that's more important to me than the actual, you know, object or the actual image of the thing. Um. This is a uh, Friedrich Kiesler's. I think this is a kind of miniature version which we built. Um, so it's been built now in many different places. So through the foundation, I I asked him to borrow the plan and make the stage, which of course becomes a kind of a platform for people to come and perform and and do different activities on. Oh, there's a clock. <laughs> All right, great. Um, and actually at the moment it's now being uh, shown in Sao Paulo in Brazil and of course with, with the situation in Brazil. But people come and they, the idea was to ha have a platform or a stage where people would come and demonstrate. So you come and you can show what you're interested in, you can give a talk, you can cook, you can you know, dance, you can do a, all sorts of different things. Which is, so it's an open stage for people to come and use. Oops, I'm always. And then almost now to the end, I'm, I, I have a friend who was actually a performance artist who was living here in New York for a while, and she, she's Japanese. And she went back to Japan and started to uh, study, you know, the ceremony of making tea. And, um, and we we had a lot of discussion and I, I was kind of interested in the idea of the tea ceremony um, as a kind of like counterbalance to like some other things I've been doing which is always to make a platform for a lot of people and then I thought maybe it's time to make like a room for like two people to like kind of reduce actually the relationship down to a bit something that's a bit more focused um, but since she's like a base uh, her background is more as a performance artist. 
Of course, she also kind of subverts the ceremony itself. Um, so I'm just going to run through. This is a project in Okayama. So it's a different, another tea room. With a maze in it. And in Okayama, originally, I wanted to build it like this out of bamboo. So to build a very big bamboo maze. And then you would have to go through the maze and then find the tea room in the middle of it. But in Okayama, they were very scared of the typhoon. And so they did, so we decided to just use kind of a steel scaffolding. And here is on the roof of the National Gallery in Singapore. Um, and when she came, uh, when Mai uh, came to Singapore, she realized it's like a tropical, hot, you know, blazing place with hot, humid sun. So instead of doing a regular, I mean, or any kind of sense of tea, she decided to just make a kind of a watermelon tea. And actually, there's an opening next week in Portier in France. And of course, again, it went from like really hot to now maybe it's going to be sitting in the winter. And I think she's uh, going to do a kind of cheese fondue ceremony. <laughs> so I think that's probably good. Yeah, thank you. So actually, we've been thinking, like, as we talk, maybe people might have ideas and just throw it at us. Um, so uh, actually, I showed uh, quickly the tea room in Okayama. And uh, Okayama has uh, started a kind of, a, I guess it's actually a triennale. Yeah. It's more like every three years. And, um, and in that, and, and it's an interesting exhibition because um, general, I mean, the past two and one just now just recently opened, uh, is that the fact that they ask artists to curate the exhibition. And parallel to that, at, as the first Okayama Trenale was uh, introduced and exhibition was ongoing, um, the kind of the team that's behind it um, which I think, I guess it's kind of funded by a patron who's like a cloth, clothing manufacturer. Uh, so they wanted to, they wanted to ask, they came to different artists and asked uh, an architects to pair up together uh, to build or to make an idea of uh, building a kind of, um, yeah, like a hotel room uh, for I assume for people who would come to see the shows, you know, or to come and be stay in Okayama, but as a kind of an idea to build another layer into that triennale. And so, yeah, so they came to me and they said, oh, you want, you know, we have, maybe you want to work with Atelier Bao? And I said, yes, perfect. You know, because, uh, I mean, we kind of know each other and have seen each other, talk to each other, but I think for me, my my interest in them is the fact that like what they, as the architects practice go, is very close to, for me like art making, you know, and also I know that there this idea of of course, always in in a way involving, I mean you call it behavioral, I call it relational, you know, but it's it's uh, certainly about like how people interact or you know, use the situation, right? Or use the platform. So I thought it was a perfect, um, at least perfect idea for us to like get together and have time to talk to each other about, you know, what the possibility can be. So it's come to some what possibility <laughs> you have been discussing so far, new concept of the hotel. Uh, uh, yeah. No, no, but the... Uh, no, the process was, um, yeah, it's, a, it's something um, predictable. So it's, a, yes, first, of, yeah, the first input from uh, Liquid was just a kind of text. Yeah. And then... It's like a little story. It's a little story. About uh, a man who goes into a space to yeah, stay in a space. Yeah. And then since we didn't have any prop site, we don't know how... We don't know the budget, so we just have a recreate the text, and then my how to say this hand drawings uh, with pencils, 
following this instruction uh, from from the text, yes, from the story. And then, and then I think it's, and then later we meet again in Tokyo and then discuss uh, further about the, the, how to reframe, reconsider the accommodation today. So rather than kind of, a, yeah, accommodation is basically commercial uh, facility, but uh, this uh, uh, commercial facility is also somehow institutionalized. Um, and then, so you can guess uh, what is going to happen in the accommodation in the hotel. And then we are interested in to reinvent or new type of experience or new type of uh, relationship between people, new type of behavior in the accommodation and um, in this project. And then we were both interested in the energy issue, <laughs> for example. Okay, let's uh, start um, thinking about how to boil the hot water <laughs> for bath. Yeah, this is the beginning. Yeah. So we start thinking about with fire and then the energy resources to make fire. So it's, a, it's a exactly a, uh, the same interest that I, sh uh, I made the presentation about the, the access, better, uh, making better accessibility to local resources. And um, um, instead of just being provided from the, the uh, industrial services nowadays, and then Rigrid says, okay, maybe it's nice to, to have two different type of guests. One is one pay for other. One rich, one rich guy or one rich woman pay for other, other people. But the other people uh, somehow prepare the bus or uh, making fire. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then uh, we were drunk. Yeah, yeah we, we were <laughs> drunk. Yeah, we were drunk in the bar. Yes, yes. a lot so, of beers. A lot of beers, and then so we we enjoy talking about this scenario. But uh, yes, so today's uh, uh, discussion start from this uh, status. Yes, how to prepare the bus for the rich people. Yeah. <laughs> Well, no, I mean, I think um, I was always uh, even like, say, the idea of the apartment, that interest in a sense of, you know, to make a space for students who can go first because they should also go and enjoy or see. And actually, probably more important for that, for me, that the young people can go and have a place to stay that's affordable. I mean, in this case, the idea, I mean, if it, even you know is that it would be free right and that someone else who's staying in the 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 other side would be basically funding the people who you know so it's a kind of uh, finding a way to make a reverse the economy of it um but of course like on the other hand the people who are staying for free could also have an input a little bit you know rather than just and you know that there is a little bit of um, yeah warm the water for everyone kind of thing um, so that's the kind of like a part where we started, yes. but I think us. I mean, I I realize, and I mean, it's interesting to see because, um, like, one always. I mean, I need to know really where the th thing is going to be first. You know, I always need to know the room, the museum, the city, the people. You know, I always need to know the context, yeah. and it was kind of difficult, yeah. right? Because we didn't have a real context. Yeah. Um, they are waiting for us to build it as if like we would just bring a building and put it in an empty lot. Mm. And we're saying, no, we want to know the lot before we put something in it. Um, you know, so it's been kind of this uh, back and forth. Egg yeah. and chicken, so. Yes, yeah. Chicken. But I think uh, maybe after today, maybe we can make some lines and yes. send it to them. <laughs> Second chapter. Yeah. Yes. Is this year Liam Gillig already uh, realized one hotel. Yes, yes. So three years later, 
uh, the next triennial, you can make something to realize. <laughs> but maybe at the, instead of a Q&A, it'd be great to ask some audience what kind of element for the hotel people expect as a kind of participation. How about, is there any idea for the audience to advise or <laughs> request? Advice. Uh, we have microphones, so I can bring it to you. Yeah, back side. Hi. Uh, there's this thing in cafes called suspended coffees. Um, one person pays for a coffee for the next person who's homeless. Uh -huh. um, so it's kind of something where you don't really have to justify it. You can just say, I, I'd like a coffee and point at something on the wall and oh. get the coffee. Suspended coffee. Suspended coffee. 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 Suspended coffee. Okay. Oh, good idea. Okay. Suspended hotel. Suspended hotel. Yeah. 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 Suspended bed. Suspended bed. Suspended you could pay bed. for your bed, and then bed. someone else gets another bed. Oh. I was just curious what your response. I don't know if this is working. I was curious what your response would be if it was something like everybody who stayed there in the two parts of the hotel needed to spend 15 minutes together or do a performance for each other, even if they're not performers or are, yeah. something outside of the transactional um, physical material yeah. realm. Yeah, I think actually when you said this coffee idea, I did think like, ah, oh, you know, I think part of the process would be that, you know, the person who's paying for everyone would meet everyone, mm -hmm. you know, that paying. So and that could, of course, just be a coffee or like a tea or you know a, a meal shared so we i think it would be interesting to somehow make the two parts meet anyway you know yeah, yeah. Uh, but of course in a way it would be like part of the program of how the thing mm. is running right mm. okay. is there any request uh, <laughs> I, I mean, I guess for me, it's, um, I mean, I, I would be interested to know, like, if people go and stay in a hotel, right, what's the minimum you want, right? Mm. I mean, when I go to a hotel, the minimum I want is a hard bed and a nice shower, <laughs> you know, that seems for me, like, you know, it could be, it doesn't have to be a big room, as long as those two things are good, it's fine, you yeah. know. Um, bus, well, I, I need bus, bus, bus tub. Bus tub, yeah, yeah. That's a high standard. <laughs> <laughs> <How's> that, <laughs> Momoyo san. <laughs> Momoyo san, how about that? <laughs> yeah. I, I don't know. Um, you know, I, I'm also thinking about like uh, how they share some experience. Like, like um, yeah, stay one same places. The the. Like in Japan, for example, bathtub we share, ne? Mm -hmm. like uh, you know the very big right. bath, like a uh, sento, something like the the boil of water and one by one. So we like uh, take a bath together, something like, and then chatting. <laughs> so like, that happen or not? So like a more singular bathing or like a communal <laughs> bathing. So yeah. that's that's very maybe it's a di difference. So the mm -hmm. and also the size of the. A uh, bath is also different. Yeah. I mean, I would think, of course, like Okayama would be like more local tourism yes. in a way, right? Yes. Yes. Because I don't feel that a lot of, I mean, they go to Naoshima, maybe mm -hmm. some people, but yes. you know, to Okayama, it's still more yeah. local no. tourism. So I think those ideas are probably shared anyway. Yeah, yeah. So one could already see that, oh, you know, it's not a big gap to like have people share a bath, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it sounds like the bath is the center of the hotel idea. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and to relax and to share yeah, yeah. and to enjoy. So it's a really kind of looking for this meeting can develop for the next chapter. <laughs> and, uh, but I think it's you need the site content so we can kind of request to the owner uh, to decide the maybe location mm -hmm. but we are preparing another beer 
to encourage your discussion. So after that, we have a reception. So maybe uh, you can join uh, the reception and uh, ask the question to the uh, lecturer. And also the exhibition is continues until nine. So please uh, enjoy. And uh, uh, please say thank you. Uh, I want to say thank you for today to coming together and uh, showing us an interesting uh, project and the idea. And thanks audience for joining us today.